Today we're going to make francese. And francese is a very similar bread to a ciabatta. Uh, it's a high hydration dough, uh, but the difference being is that it's going to have some whole wheat flour, still made with a poulish, and, uh, and it's, it's actually a bread that, that very few people really have heard of or have done, but it's really going to be maybe one of the best breads you've ever uh, made and or tasted. Uh, it's one of my, my personal favorites, and I like to make it uh, often. So. Last night, uh, I made a poulish. Uh, poulish as you would do for baguettes, as we've done for ciabatta as such. And uh, it's fermented about 14 hours, 15 hours uh, in that range. And it looks just absolutely perfect. So as you can see with the poulish, that it has uh, fully risen. And you can see it just slightly to recede in here. You can actually see it's still you know, fermenting. There's little bubbles that'll come up uh, a little bit here and there. It has a wonderful flavor and a wonderful smell, uh, which attributes a lot to the, uh, the overall flavor. Plus it gives us the, uh, the physical strength of extensibility rather than elasticity, which is essential uh, in any of these kind of longer breads that we're gonna make. So what we're gonna do is take the poolish as we have here, just put it in the mixer and you can see how there's actually some strength still in it. And, Coming off. Again, take the water and uh, this is a really, really good benefit to uh, to getting the rest of the uh, the poolish out. Pretty much, it. you'll see every single baker do this. Okay, so we've got that. Now we'll put the rest of the water. Our flour, as I mentioned, uh, it's both whole wheat and white flour. So we have uh, 1,130 grams of white flour, uh, 230 grams of whole wheat flour, 919 grams of water. Uh, I've got 34 grams of salt, Another about five grams of yeast right here. And then also the poolish, which was made last night, which had uh, equal parts water and uh, flour, white flour, 340 grams each. And uh, mixed that last night with just a little pinch of yeast. Uh, so approximately a, a gram. Take our flour. And again, with any, anytime you scale, uh, be thoughtful that, uh, especially with the yeast and the salt, that if you're going to scale them to the same container, you're going to keep them separate so they don't touch each other because the, the yeast will start to dissolve. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the salt will start to dissolve the yeast. All right. and you don't want that. So just as we've done in ciabatta, it's going to be a low speed, the entire mix, and it's going to be about seven, eight minutes. Okay, so we're going to initially just get it into incorporation and then follow through with the full incorporation. And once that's done, then we're going to put it on the table and fold it prior to letting it bulk ferment. Okay, so it's been seven minutes now and uh, we're done mixing as far as incorporation. We don't need to go into a higher speed for development because all that development is going to happen with the folds. Just like in a ciabatta, we're going to fold this over approximately three hours, uh, three times about every 45 minutes. If it looks like it's going to be stiffer or tighter uh, on the first fold, then just go to two folds, but you would need at least two folds of there. So we're going to take our dough and just as a preparation, prior to uh, putting in the container to ferment. I'm just gonna give a little bit of a fold on the table, okay? OK, 
Okay, and considering that this has whole wheat flour in it, and whole wheat absorbs much more water, this is not gonna look quite as uh, loose. All right, so we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil, uh, any kind of oil, into here uh, as a container just to let it not stick to the sides as much. It really takes very little to do this. But you'll appreciate it when you're gonna have to, to get the dough out of the container. All right. And all we're gonna do is just let this ferment and give it, like I said, anywhere from two to three folds as needed. Okay, so we're gonna do our first fold. It's been, uh, like I said, about 45 minutes. And just we've done with ciabatta, a little bit of oil in the container and a little bit of flour on the top. This isn't nearly as sticky as the ciabatta, but it definitely needs a little bit as well. Uh, this was 77 degrees, so it's gonna ferment probably at around three hours total. So I need to be thoughtful of time the entire way. If you see, this is already just in that little bit of time starting to develop and just a nice long stretch and over. And you see this very, very nice dough. We will give this one, possibly two more folds and, uh, and then we'll be in the time to divide. Okay, so we waited another uh, approximately 45 minutes and to see where we're at. So we're an hour and a half into the bulk fermentation and it's just now starting to get a little bit going. And I am gonna give it uh, probably all three folds. It's uh, very happy with the uh, the progress on how this is developing. So, so again, just uh, just a nice long stretch. And we have a nice dough. So we're at the third and final fold on the ciabatta. And uh, as I mentioned, it was every 45 minutes or so and does looking very, very nice, happy with it. Okay, starting to get light uh, and airy too. So it's gonna be wonderful, wonderful in about another 45 minutes that we're gonna divide it. Just to see again, just this wonderful strength that's built up, yet it's just an incredibly light uh, dough. And with that little bit of whole wheat, the poolish, uh, it's, it's just, it's a really wonderful, fantastic piece of bread. So we've waited, uh, it's about three hours, 15 minutes now, and uh, the dough has had three folds. Uh, we did a, a short mix or uh, just in low speed uh, to do that. It was about seven, eight minutes total. Dough temperature around 77. So if you kind of meet those parameters, this is about the timing of what it is. If it's not within that range or your room is colder, okay, so we have a, a pretty warm uh, 75 degree room altogether, uh, again, down in Florida here. And it is a pretty much a exactly where that timing is. So whenever I release a dough, I don't want to force it out, especially one that is so fragile. You just kind of very slowly ease it out. And it's, it's turned into a very, very, very nice dough. I'm very happy with it. We're gonna divide this similar to a ciabatta, but then again, not. Uh, what this is is going to be uh, cut into longer and more narrow strips. Just as you would for a ciabatta, try to stretch the dough out 
very, very gently. You're not degassing this in any way possible. And you're just very, very slowly running these things out. All right. Again, this is not going to be shaped. It's just going to be cut. And I'm going to want them to be maybe a couple inches wide of a strip. And what we're going to do is place it on a flower side uh, down on what we call the cut side or the bleeding side, as I'll show you here. And then when we load it and we flip it over, it's going to be on that uh, unshaped side. It'll kind of break open, uh, crack when it's, uh, when it's baking. It's, it's a pretty nice bread that way. So again, we're going to have long kind of narrow strips. You want to make sure that you have enough flour on your kush again, that it's not going to stick, but also at the same time, it's going to give a very cool pattern uh, that's going to be on there. My oven is only 15 inches deep. And since it's a long, narrow strip, you're going to be uh, loading it directly in uh, like we've done for baguettes and others. So I'm going to try to make sure that I keep it in that. So what I did is I made this to be about this length. So it'll be about the length of my, my oven. And all we're going to do is take this, cut it as such. Again, if it's sticking in any way, just try to release it. And then the cut side, which is here, is going to be laid down on here. You want to very gently put these on, All right? And this would be a much more traditional Francesi. I've rarely seen these in grocery stores or bakeries, uh, but it's it's an excellent bread, and I'm sure that you'll enjoy it. So again, just a relatively narrow strip. Okay. If you feel like you're going to be stuck to it in any way, just oh wait. Need to put some here too. Try to lift it and not stretch it also. Turn it on its side to where the cut side is, the part that's down. All right, so you just keep going at it and run these just like that. All right, so I'll finish dividing the rest of this, doing the same thing, flour, cut side down, and then just like in the ciabattas as well, what it's gonna be is uh, about maybe 15 to 20 minutes of a relaxed time, and when, uh, when we're ready to load, which will only be in that period of time. But, all right, so here we have this. All right, about the length of the oven, flour, cut, bleeding side down. All right. All right, so after we divided the dough, uh, and as you can see, they uh, are kind of just a long, narrow uh, piece. And when we did cut it, it was the cut side uh, or what we also call the bleeding side that is uh, exposed. And so when we do, it's on both sides of this. So when we flip it over, it's also gonna be exposed and it's gonna kind of open up and crack and break, be very nice. It's a very traditional way for the, the Francesi to be made. At least I, I told you how this is uh, one of my favorites and just that little bit of whole wheat fermented with a poolish and, uh, and then taking the length of time and, and uh, you know, good process truly makes a, a very nice, nice product. So the, I'm gonna load the left side of the oven and I'm gonna put two pieces in now and then I'm gonna put three across. This itself is wider than the center point of my oven. So if I were to load the full thing across and I try to go in with the, uh, the second load on the peel, I would damage that loaf that's in the middle. So you have to be thoughtful as to kind of what you're doing. If it's slightly longer than it peels, no big deal. Uh, all I'm gonna do is when I load it, I'm gonna start to kind of stretch it out a little bit as I go. When you load though, do not stretch it much uh, to be different from what the, the loaf is intended for. It's 
um, you could really, really stretch this out uh, if you load badly. So you have to do it with a kind of a light confidence and then just slowly bring it out. I'm going to use ice again and uh, water for steam. Coming back again. I actually think I got one of my loaves just a little bit over the edge. We'll see what happens with it. Be thoughtful again as to how it's going to be loaded and where it's going to be placed. All right. So what we're going to have is steam. And all right. Very good. Now we just got to wait about 25 minutes or so. So we finished baking and we have wonderful color. Bread looks very, very nice. You can see how the, uh, the breaks and the cracks open uh, from the, the cut side. And just in general, the, the bread looks very, very nice. And if you could tell just from this, it, it really doesn't take a whole lot. We were able to put the cut side, the bleeding side down come up and then when you flip it over it bakes off and it has this nice little break and crack. Very very simple process. Again it doesn't take a whole lot. Really all it is is again four ingredients. We used uh, flour, water, salt, and yeast, a pre-ferment, and that's about it. So with good process, good procedure, uh, a decent oven, you can make actually incredible breads and just be satisfied with it. Had a little leftover dough, made some rolls, and uh, it's just it's a, it's a wonderful way to take uh, what we've been learning and produce one of the best breads that you may ever eat.